me just go on and say this. I'm protective of any woman, of any woman, because no man has the right to put his hands on a woman. True indeed. No man. I mean, I know women do some things that 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 that, that shouldn't be done. But I'm saying, man, don't fight a woman. I mean, you you a man. You can walk off. Walk yeah. off out of life. Don't hurt no woman, man. And any woman, I, I seen a man beat a woman one time, man. And I stopped right in the middle of the street, man, and, and, and had this baseball bat in the trunk of my car, and I got my baseball bat. And I said, you put your hand on her one more damn time, I'm going to take this goddamn bat, and I'm going to lay your brains all out here on this damn street. He stopped. He stopped. He got up in his car and left her land right there. And this woman and I are real good friends right to this day. Wow. Right to this day, we never became intimate or none, but we are like best of friends. She, if I had a phone right now, she would pick that phone up and she would call me right now and say, what you doing? And if I told her I was homeless right now, she would come to my aid right now to help me. I think that's good because they what they call it chivalry. I don't think chivalry. that they teach that anymore. Yeah, and they say, that, this is what they say, chivalry is dead. It got to be chivalry. to some extent. Yeah. I mean, you got a few good dudes out there. Today. Man, I'm just like, I love life, and I don't mind telling my story. My story, I, you know, like I said, I've gotten older now, and a lot of things that I have forgotten. But as it come to my mind, I'll, I'll, I'll share it. I'll share it. Hey, I don't wait. know how many minutes we went. We been we 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 bought forty in, but that we could we could go a little bit more. I, I just want to touch on like as you was getting older, like with some of the stuff that you saw in the streets. As as you was getting into the drugs, okay, with some of the stuff that came along with that. I can remember like with the hard drugs. I can remember over in Brookfield, God. I remember that. Brookfield. And I scored. I was I was scoring. And I saw, I saw these three guys in the back of the house. And this guy owed the drug dealer about $80, about $80 or $90. And the other one was standing maybe about a feet away from him. And he had a gas can in his damn hand. And he was throwing gas on him. Throwing gas on him. He said, you don't give me my damn $80, I'm going to set your ass on fire. And, and, and it actually, he set him on fire he set the dude on fire he set the dude on fire but the other one shot the dude he shot him in the head i guess to take him to keep him from screaming and hollering to keep him drawing all the attention yeah now this is the god i actually saw that Damn. he poured gas on one of them poured the gas on him and the other one shot him and Went on about him they on did. Fire. And he, yeah, they left him laying right there. The next morning, guy, they got all, he was laying right there. And somebody called the, 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 the fire department. I mean, called the um, police and everything. And they came out. And I, I guess they locked it. I guess they found out who the guys were that did it. Because they locked them up. And But they had set this dude on fire, man. And, and burned them over four, over 40 was it, $80. Over $80, over 80 man, worth of, worth, worth of drugs, man. I've od I've OD. What was that like? Well, I can recall my son and I had had went to work a job out of town. Is where you take out all of the um, all the old shelves and put in all new shelves for like and, stores. Yeah, for stores. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it was uh, Family Dollar. And we did a job at Family Dollar, and we had took taken out all of the shelves and put in all new shelves and put all the new merchandise up and put all the new, uh, all the different prices back up on them and everything. And I had made a hundred and, a hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get the, I didn't get the check right then because I had, we had to wait two weeks in order to get the check. And I came back down here because I had a job down here at the Family Dollar on uh, 25th Street to do the same thing. They worked up there, and by me, by my son getting me in, into this job thing, I got the one down here. So I was doing the one down here, and my son owed me $130. And so he was on his way back down to bring me the $130. I mean, I wanted to say $130. It was $1,300, not $100. It was $1,300. And he was bringing the check back down to me. So I told, I told my um. 
my neighbor, I said, look, man, I said, you got to go out and you got to get me a, a dime of dope before my son gets here. Because I said, once my son get here, man, I said, I'm not going to be able to do nothing. I said, my son going to stay on me, man, like white on rice. He going to be on my butt. He ain't going to, because my son don't, don't condone me using drugs. Yeah. He wants me to be off of this and he, cause he know what type of dad I am and he knows how I am toward my grandkids yeah. when I'm not drugging and all of that right there. My grandkids love me unconditionally. They see Papa, boy, everything ceases. They come running to Papa, everything ceases. That's what's up. And uh, matter of fact, they were down here for my mother's funeral and man, the whole time that they were down here instead of them standing over with their dad they were hovered around my legs holding on to papa yeah, right that's what's up so uh my son owed me that that um thirteen hundred dollars and i sent the boy out to get the dime of dope and i had already took a 30 uh percocet took a 30 of percocet and he went out and he got that dime of dope for me that's when fentanyl had just hit the set and so this dope had fentanyl in it. And I shot it up. And when I shot it up, that's the last thing that I could remember. Wow. When I opened my eyes back up, because they had called the paramedics and had called the police. Now the police came, anytime it's an overdose, the police gonna automatically come. So the paramedics and everything came and shot me up with that, no, that Novocaine, that Nov whatever it is, yeah. no Narcane. He shot me up with the Narcane and everything. And when I opened my eyes back up, I could see my son. I could see my son, I could vaguely see my son. And I could see my, my, my daughter-in-law. And I could see the paramedics and the police standing over top of me. So the police asked me, uh, do I know where I'm at? And I said, yeah, I know where I'm at. So he said, well, where, where, where you at? I said, I'm at home. He said, well, what's your name? I told him my name. I said, yeah. He said, do you know your social security number? I said, yeah. He said, well, give me your social security number. Give me your name. So I gave him all that. He said, yeah, well, you all right. He said, well, get up and put your hands behind your back. Wow. Get up and put your hands behind your back. So I got him and I put my hands behind my back. And the came downtown. I didn't have any warrants or anything, but I think what they wanted to find out was where I had got the had got the drugs and stuff from mm. but a street law is see nothing hear nothing know nothing you don't tell nothing and even even if it would have got me out of trouble i wasn't gonna tell them because i got to live on the street i got to live out here amongst these people and if i tell on on, on tom dick or her <laughs> who's to say they're not gonna come back and, and kill me I think a lot of people don't understand that they they think it from their point of view, right. and they don't understand what it's like to be in it every single day. Every single day you're living in it. And this this is your life. This is where you got to live at. And if I tell on, on this person right here, tell on that person, then when I come back, I got to deal with these people. You know, exactly. although they locked up, they got friends out here that's gonna 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 do me in. Exactly. Snitching was not a thing. You, I mean, anything that happened, you do not snitch. You do not snitch. You worried. If you get caught, you worried. You worried what's, what's ever going on in your life. If you go out and you see Michael kill somebody, you don't tell. But you would want somebody to tell if somebody killed your, 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 your family I mean, member. Yeah, you? I would. Yeah. But you know what's interesting, like growing up, in, in, in that environment, the police don't do a good job of looking out for the people. No, I they don't. I think it might be different if you knew you could rely on the law to enforce the law. Right, right, right. That's like I can remember. Uh, it was one time that this person had had was a was a was a uh, a witness, and they put the person up in a motel, and the police didn't got they get all check it real well because the person who they put in the motel. They followed, the, the, the person who they told on, their a family member followed the police to see where they was gonna put that person at in the motel. Yeah. And they went in that motel and they killed that person. They had no security on no them No security or nothing and they killed that person. It's like once they get what they want. They don't care. They don't care. And I don't think that they understand the risk that the, the citizens taking just to do 
what they deem as the right thing. Exactly. 